Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Savannah and today we are back in River Rock Zoo in Planet Zoo, uh, building a habitat for the doll sheep. I mentioned in the last video that the doll sheep and the reindeer are the two kind of classically North American animals that this zoo is missing. So I thought for this week we would make sure to add the doll sheep in to our zoo. Now the one problem that I did have when thinking about reindeer and doll sheep or any hoof stock really, um, I kind of just think of square enclosures with some shelter and some grass and some trees and you know it meets everything as far as their needs go and it's kind of what you see in uh, zoos in real life as well. So I really kind of struggled to to come up with an idea on how I was going to make this different. Now, doll sheep being climbing animals do really need uh, lots of rocks and things for them to jump around on. That's kind of what they're built for and they are, um, you know, kind of a, a climbing species as far as in the wild um, running around on cliff faces and rocks and things like that. They actually have an incredible ability to climb and um, basically get a foothold on um, rocks that really stick deep angles and things like that. So I knew that I wanted to add in um, some level of elevation to this habitat to make it realistic for them, um, but I didn't want to make it square. So in my mind, when I was thinking of what is the opposite of a square, my mind went straight to circle. Now, I don't know if officially circles and squares are the opposite of each other, um, but that's where my mind went. That's how it worked. So I decided to start with a base of a circle shape and go from there. Um, it actually ended up giving the guests a really cool view as far as when they stand on the viewing platform, they get kind of a 180 degree kind of view of where the animals are. It does a really good job at keeping the animals close um, and allowing the guests to have a really wide view of their enclosure um, to see what the sheep are up to. And then I tweeted out on Twitter a um, sneak peek of this habitat and basically saying that if you like rock work, this is the build for you. And that is 100% true. There are lots and lots and lots of rocks in this build. Like I said before, um, doll sheep are um, very agile and do live in areas where there's lots of rocks for them to jump around on. So I wanted to make sure it was realistic in that regard. And the one thing that I ran into trouble with that is that I was was using primarily the taiga rocks because um, I liked the color of them but once I started putting lots of them in the gray even though it's different textures like I was rotating rocks around and using specifically different ones uh, in the game they kind of all started to blend together and it was really gray like the whole habitat was just gray rock so I ended up taking the temperate as well as some of the tropical rocks and sinking those in as well just to kind of break up the color a little bit. Um, the temperate, the taiga, and the tropical rocks um, are all different shades of that darker, lighter gray. Um, the temperate is a little bit browny in color, but that kind of gives a little bit of variety as far as the coloration goes on the, ro on the rocks. And I think that that gives it a little bit more of a natural feel to it. So overall, pretty happy how it turns out. And in fact, I thought I was going to have a harder time with the sheep being able to, to traverse all of the different areas, like um, this upper part here that I'm working on. I thought that I was going to have to do lots of terrain smoothing and add different rocks so they can jump from one to the other. But the game mechanics actually work in and, and take into consideration that doll sheep are really um, agile at running across rock surfaces and climbing them, um, that they had no problem with it. So I was really pleased with that, actually. It made me uh, pretty happy to see that that was kind of worked into their pathfinding traversable area systems in the game, that they didn't have any issue um, moving from rock to rock. So that was pretty cool. Um, Another question that I get asked a lot, um, talking about inspiration, my mind just jumped back to my whole circle square um, conversation, but I get asked a lot on how I come up with what I'm going to build. And um, I've mentioned in the past, working off of reference pictures, I do that quite a bit, um, but to find those reference pictures, I actually very rarely search for anything, zoo, habitat, enclosure, anything like that. Um, you know, real life zoos, many of them are very, very cool. And I do take lots of real life inspiration from the San Diego Zoo and the San Diego Wild Animal Park um, because that's where I'm based and I've grown up going to those parks and absolutely love them. But, um, you know, 
the animal's needs can be met with something that's not very interesting to us. Um, so rather, I search for architecture pictures. So I'll search the style that I'm wanting to build. So modern, simple, um, geometric, whatever it may be, um, and just search for architecture. And then I'll take either the um, the drawing of the building that I found or a real life building that has pictures and kind of adapt it to how I think it would fit in a zoo setting or fit um, with a habitat around it. That's exactly what I did with the previous episode, the grizzly habitat. And if you haven't checked that one out, um, I highly recommend it. That one, I was super pleased with how that habitat came out. I think it was really, really cool. Um, but that was just a generic building. It had nothing to do with a zoo or animals or anything like that. And I just kind of took it and uh, adapted it to what I thought might work best for a zoo setting. So if you're struggling for inspiration, you know, all I use is Google, sometimes Pinterest, um, and, and search for images that way. So I, I at least find it um, really, really helpful when looking for inspiration. So if you are struggling, um, maybe try that and let me know how it goes. Um, this water here, actually, I did, I did this as well in the last grizzly habitat um, and decided to implement it here too really trying to um, remind myself that you know these are zoos and that they would need to be cleaned and really trying to keep the aspect of realism in my builds um, so trying to put that in the forefront of my mind is that um, any type of water that the animal would have access to would need to be drained and cleaned periodically um, so it typically wouldn't just be you know dirt or something on the bottom um, other than like concrete or something easy to drain and clean out now there are exceptions obviously some places have things that are different but ideally um, that's what you would want for the animals is, is something that you could drain and completely clean out so I added that in here um, as well but it's also a good break between the public and the animal. Um, lots of zoo habitats will have kind of a dip in elevation, um, a dry moat, or in this case, water that kind of separates the animal from the guest. So um, I thought that that was, uh, or I, rather I'm really happy with the look of the one I did last time, really happy with the look of this one too. So um, adding the drain in there, I just think it adds, uh, you know, an element of realism. It was a really long tangent for basically saying, I like how it looks and it looks very realistic. So I wanted to do it again. Um, so hopefully you guys like it too. This right here was actually the only part of the build where I took a reference picture um, to build this. This is just a shade structure. Um, well, I'm not sure, quite sure how much shade it would give you because it is a glass roof, but more just decorative. You know, it's the viewing platform for the guests to try to make them feel like they are a part of the exhibit. And all I did was Google um, shade structure. I didn't even Google, you know, modern shade structure or anything like that, just shade structure. And something came up that looks very very similar to this um, I was able to kind of replicate it almost exactly and I think it was just in some sort of park or it might have even been like a, a bus stop or something like that um, but I utilized it here and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out so you can get inspiration from basically anywhere so um, as I'm working on that I did want to take the opportunity to thank you guys so much um, a couple video go blah 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 <laughs> a couple videos ago I mentioned how excited I was and how thankful I was that we had 180 subscribers and we've almost um almost doubled that at the time of this recording and that's fantastic I can't thank you guys enough I'm so just blown away by the the feedback and the support that I'm getting from the community and the viewers and it's just amazing because like I said I when I first started making these videos it was just you know, fun. I'm, I'm building this already, so why not just throw them up here and let other people see them and enjoy and share with the community. And I've gotten such a fabulous response, so thank you so, so much. And if you haven't subscribed or liked already, um, if you're enjoying the video, I would really appreciate it. Um, but let me know any feedback down below. I uh, One of my other favorite things is responding to comments, and I have made it a goal of mine to respond to, to basically everything. So if I've missed one, I apologize, but that's at least the goal is so that I can respond and really you know interact with you guys and and um, be a part of the community because I'm having uh, tons of fun doing that um, so thank you thank you thank you 
Um, I did, by the way, I uh, didn't want to forget to mention, I think I cut it out of the video, but I did end up sinking chillers down into the ground. Um, the habitat was slightly too warm for the doll sheep, so when I do get this one up on steam, um, it will have those chillers in the ground. I just really dislike how they look, and uh, they're just not too realistic as far as like a teeny tiny thing would um, be able to chill the whole habitat, but I sunk those in the ground just so that the animals are happy. So that if you're playing with all the requirements on, that they should be just fine with that. Um, that is also the reason why I didn't put snow down. Now, snow in a zoo in North America, at least where I'm at in San Diego, obviously it doesn't snow naturally here. Um, we do have some of the animals at the San Diego Zoo get snow seasonally. Um, they just have, you know, snow machines that make snow and then it melts. Um, so they could do something like that for the sheep here but I left it with no snow to be a little bit more accurate to the climate that the zoo is actually in. Um, but yeah, so as I'm finishing up the shade structure and then um, I do actually add a little garden walk on the other side opposite the habitat um, just to kind of fill in that little extra green space that you can see right behind this shade structure. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. It serves no purpose other than to just be decorative. Um, I do make a couple more custom signs that I will throw up on the Steam Workshop as well. I did end up putting the Grizzly Bear Habitat signs up on the Steam Workshop too, so check those out and feel free to use them. If you guys ever use any of my builds, tweak them, use anything for your own. Um, if you take pictures and post them, please tag me in them. I would absolutely love to see how you improve upon my builds or use what I put on the Steam Workshop. I think that that would be fabulous. I've gotten a couple pictures um, so far and, and they're wonderful. You, you guys have awesome, you know, creativity and imaginations and taking what I've done and basically just making it better where I've missed things. So please feel free to do that because um, I would love to see. But yeah, with that, it's a little bit of a shorter one. Um, I believe this video, all told, is only going to be about 20 minutes or so. Not quite done editing, but I hope you guys enjoy. Um, the next video will be up a week from when this video goes live, so on Friday at 10 a.m. Again, thank you so much for the support, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!